like. Oh, my God, you're right, sir. Beer and beef. That's the stuff that makes soldiers. Besides, it gives a man a figure. Have you seen today's Times, sir? No, will you? The news from Paris. Yes. Over 50 people guillotined in one day. Damnable, useless cruelty. Well, what can you expect of a lot of foreigners with no sporting instincts? Again, if it wasn't for our fox hunting and our pheasant shooting, I dare say we should be cruel too. Let's hope the Scarlet Pimpfel will save some of the rest. Do you know who he is, sir? No. But I confess I feel a little prouder when I remember that he is an Englishman. Well, whoever he is, you have his work cut out in Paris. Will you read this, sir? They go again. It's always the same. The drums roll, the knife falls, and another aristocrat parts company with his head. Are they monotonous? And so clumsy, that great ugly machine. When all they need is a sharp razor, a quick wrist and flick. Here, yeah, steady. Oh, you're all right, Father. But I wish they'd give me a few aristocrats to shave. Hey, Jack. Then we should see some sport. You would. You see me dealing with the Scarlet Pimpernel. The what? The Scarlet Pimpernel. Haven't you heard? There is a band of Englishmen helping these cursed aristos out of the country. Their chief is the only man who ever cheated Madame Guillotine. He's known by the title of the Scarlet Pimpernel. Who is he? Oh, that's the mystery. Farmer from Nordesk, are you? Yes, sir. <laughs> and you thought you could fool me with a disguise like that? Well, I'll keep this wig of yours, because after tomorrow you won't have a head to put it on. <laughs> I shall be delighted to visit Madame Guillotine and make the acquaintance of the only decent person left in France. Captain, I say death to the Republic and long live the King! Stupid fool. That makes the third aristocrat I've caught this week. <laughs> I can smell him through any disguise.
heaven for the game of chess. It enables us to forget the more disagreeable realities of life. I'm not so sure it is a good thing. We've been too detached from reality all our lives. That's what caused the revolution. Possibly. Undoubtedly. If we'd only had eyes to see our own follies, we shouldn't be here now, waiting to be shaved by the National Razor. Which is the Count de Tournay? I'm the Count de Tournay's daughter. My father's over there playing chess. This is my mother. If you will look at the passage I have marked, your spirits will be uplifted. We're not afraid to die, Father. Even so, it is sometimes better to live. Robespierre gives Madame Guillotine extra fodder today. The former Duc de Tours. The former Abbe de saint preux The former Count and Countess de Lani. The former Madame de Nijon. The former Count de Terry. The former Marquis de Jouvence and family. The former Marquis de Ribeaupierre. The two Countesses Airy. The former Mademoiselle de Bona, the two former Duchesses Passe and Bonivo, the former Marquis de Murray, the former Count de Tournay and family, the former Countess de Cherville, the former Madame de Pica, the former Count d'Arblay. <laughs> Tony. I am. You're remanded. Citizen Robespierre wants to see you. My God! Let you get on. Go ahead, get Take him inside. Come on. Don't be with me, hearties. Look at it. Three and twenty locks of hair in it. There they are. There's the, there's the Duc de Marie. There's his handsome wife, the Duchess. And here's the hair of her lover, a handsome lady. Where's your passport, hag? He takes me for an aristocrat. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're right, Captain. 
can't be too careful, can you? No, you can't be too... Here, here's my passport. Uh, this says Citizeness, Rano and Grandson. Where's the grandson? He's in the cart, poor darling. Huh? What's the matter with him? He's got the plague. Oh, oh. oh it's a horrible black plague. Plague? Yes. I don't think I shall get him alive as far as Charles Bois. Give me a, give me a light from your pipe, will you, Captain? Keep away from me with your plague. Get out of here, quick. And when you come back to Paris, try another gate, for you won't pass through this one again. You're right, Captain. You're right. But I'll be back. Somehow. Who's in charge here? I am. An old hag of a woman will pass this way in a cart. You ought to stop her and arrest her. Did you say an old hag? You heard me. But, but she passed through here some time ago. Her passport was... Oh, miserable fool! You blundering idiot! Did you search the cart? No, no, I... I uh, her grandson was inside with the plague. Would you expect me to expose... You were expected to use your brains! Now I see you haven't any. That sick grandson was rarely three aristocrats snatched from the guillotine. Ten thousand hells. And the old hag, who was she? The old hag, my clever captain, was that cursed Englishman, the Scarlet Pimpernel. Forward, we'll catch him this time. Oh, oh, the like a troop of horsemen. We are being pursued. Frightened ladies. You're among friends. But these soldiers. My friends, mademoiselle, and yours. Are you the Scarlet Pimpernel? I'm only a humble instrument in the hands of our great leader. How many are you? Twenty, madame. One to command, nineteen to obey. Shall we see your leader? I'm sorry, I must ask you to hurry. Where was the Tourney? Taken back into prison. Why? We don't know. Well, we have to come back and fetch him. How are things at Calais? Lawson's there. And Ashurst? He hadn't arrived when we left. Oh, hadn't he? His time sense is defective. That's twice. They may have arrested him. They're very careful at the Channel ports nowadays. My orders to you are that you're not to be arrested. And I expect my orders to be obeyed. Yes, Percy. You, Wilmot, and Grant go back to Paris. My brother-in-law will follow you there. All three of you get your next instructions from Quentin. Well, goodbye. And remember, don't get caught. Right. Right. Good luck. Bye. Go. Get up.
Well, why do they keep the tournay back? Because Robespierre wants to see him. And Robespierre wants to see him because the ambassador of the Republic has come over from London. Chauvelin? Why? All in your honor, Percy. Your work is becoming even more dangerous than it was. Our work, Armand. You go back to Paris at once. Find out everything you can about Chauvelin. If he goes to London, you go too. Our most dangerous enemy is Citizen Chauvelin. My dear Chauvelin, I'm very sorry that I had to ask you to undertake the journey from London. But this matter of the Scarlet Pimpernel has become a national menace. How can you expect me to detect him in a country that hates us like the devil and puts every obstacle in my way? We expect you to overcome obstacles, like our generals in the field. They know that to lose the battle means the guillotine. Have you any plans? Naturally. We may assume that the Scarlet Pimpernel and his gang speak perfect French. They belong, therefore, to a class that has been brought up by French nurses and French tutors. So far, not bad. I have a list of all the likely names. I have them watched day and night. Sooner or later, I draw the net. Do you think de Tournay might be useful? Positive. De Tournay. The former Count de Tournay, former ambassador of the former King of France in London. Citizen Chauvelin, ambassador of the French Republic in London. De Tournay, I want to make you an offer. We offer you your life. All we ask in return is that you merely get in touch with your many English friends and soon you will be able to tell us who is the man known as the Scarlet Pimpernel. You want me to be a spy? <laughs> You've been too long in politics not to be a realist. A little piece of information? We give you your life. God gave me my life, and he will take it away as soon as it pleases him. But now my family has gone to the guillotine. My one wishes to follow them. Would it alter your outlook to hear that your family is alive? Don't trifle with me. I send them to the guillotine for the future happiness of the human race, but I do not allow torture. Where are they? I saw them being dragged towards the tumbrel. On their way to the guillotine, the band of the Scarlet Pimpernel snatched them away. Where are they? Probably in England by this time. To His Majesty King George III. God bless him for his hospitality to us poor exiles. To King Louis of France. May God protect him. And to your husband, madam. I hope the Scarlet Pimpernel and you gentlemen will rescue him, as you did us. The Scarlet Pimpernel? What a droll name. What does it mean? It is a humble wayside flower, mademoiselle. And it hides the identity of the best and bravest man in all the world. Do you know, Sir Andrew, my best friend is in London, Marguerite saint just Suzanne, how often am I to tell you I will not have that woman's name mentioned in my presence? But, Mother, you can't believe that dreadful story. What story? It's the truth. Marguerite Saint-Just denounced the Marquis de Saint-Cyr and his family to the tribunal. They all went to the guillotine. Marguerite Saint-Just? Yes. She married an Englishman. Do you know her? Know her? Everybody in London knows Lady Blakeney. something in your mouth? Not now, Mr. Romney. I can't do justice to that lovely face when it's all bulged out with bonbons. You may talk if you like, but no bonbons. And no gestures, please. All right, Mr. Romney. I'll tell you what it is about the Pimpernel that tantalizes me, sir. It's his insufferable modesty. There's no excuse for it. It's maddening to think that somewhere there's a man as marvelous as that. We never see him. 
He's of no use to us, whatever. Lady Blakeney, I said no gestures, please. Oh, you must remember that I'm a Frenchwoman, and when I talk, I must use these as well as this. The Tourney family arrive in Dover today. All except the father. We shall have to go back for him. And it's going to be devilish awkward after what's happened. Well, I'll go, and so will Hastings, if you'll let us. And we'll all go if it comes to that. But even so, we're only 20. And yesterday, 30 people went to the guillotine. Are you trying to suggest there aren't enough of us? Percy, there isn't a decent Englishman wouldn't be proud to join us. We could be 500, 1,000 within a week. Mm, and within another week, every one of us would be a marked man. And we shouldn't be able to rescue a single soul. Mere force is useless against people who are neither cowards nor fools. We must match courage with courage, and cunning with still greater cunning if we're to do anything at all. We're all willing to give our lives, but we must do more than that. We must mask our identities, suffer the humiliation of being taken for fops, fools, nitwits, cowards. But so many people die every day that could be saved. Do you think I don't feel that? Do you think I like sitting there in the shadow of the knife, while one head falls after another? People I know and love, innocent people, kindly people, herded like sheep, butchered like cattle, by men who make high-sounding principles an excuse for the most bestial cruelty, Robespierre's liberty, his equality. Well, sink me if it isn't Colonel Ramsbottom. Well, how are you, Ramsbottom? Winter bottom, sir! <laughs> <laughs> Ram's bottom, what a ridiculous mistake. <laughs> Allow me to explain, Colonel. Oh, here's that ass Blakely. Oh. <coughs> Odd's blood this club wants cheering up. Think me, the place is a mausoleum. Are you being offensive, sir? Who, oh, sir? Me, sir? No, sir. Stap me, I'm bubbling over with good humor this morning. Would you believe me? I've just written a masterpiece. Who, oh, sir? You, sir? Me, sir? No, sir. Yes, sir. All about this mysterious Pimpernel fellow. How it came to me, heaven only knows, because it was the busiest moment of the day. Damn me, I was tying my cravat. <laughs> uh, well, here it is. The Scarlet Pimpernel by Sir Percival Blakeney, Baronet. What? Well, that's the title. They seek him here, they seek him there. Those Frenchies seek him everywhere. Is he in heaven? Is he in hell? That damned elusive Pimpernel. What? Mm, not bad. Not bad, it's damn good. I'll write it out, sink me, then you can all learn it. Yes. Well, <clears throat> good day, gentlemen. And goodbye, Higginbottom. Winter bottom, curse you! I beg your pardon, didn't I say winter bottom? Hop, oh, with your young jackanapes. Oh, they're all alike, these fashionable puppies. Insufferable. What that young man needs is a year or two's hard campaigning, facing powder, and shot, undergoing privation. I can't imagine Blakeney running into much danger. <coughs> Not he. He doesn't belong to our vintage. It's not my fault. It's a matter of infinitely small importance to me whose fault it is. Sorry, sir. The man who could put starch in my jabot is equally capable of putting poison in my coffee. <laughs> <laughs> there, you see? I'm a laughing stock, and rightly so. Look at the cursed thing, sticking out like a barber's pole. Sink me, the thing is a disaster. <laughs> Go away, Brinker, you dreadful fellow. Ladies, your servant. Marguerite, your slave. Ah, Randy. How are you? And how is the portrait progressing? Hmm. The eyes are wrong, aren't they? And uh, is the nose all right? You know, I rather think you've missed the mouth altogether. Yes, you have. Otherwise, it's the image of her. <laughs> I think I can be enough for the day. Well, Mr. Romney, you're tired and so am I. Tired? Sounds, me too. You know, dear lady, 
I've just been to Bath to be cured of the fatigue. And now I'm so fatigued by the cure that I, I really think I have to go back to Bath again to be cured of the fatigue. What do you think of it? It's clever, but there's something lacking. What? I don't know. There's a look, a look in the eyes. He's lost it. Perhaps I've lost it. Perhaps it was happiness. Good God, my dear. How you could be unhappy, I can't imagine. Can't you? Percy, can't you? Oh, cursed if I can. Why, you are the most courted woman in town. By whom? By everybody. Except you. Demi, my dear, I, I'm your husband. Months after we were married, we were still happy. And then came this estrangement, which heaven knows is none of my making. Can you honestly say that? Can you honestly deny that you've changed? So changed that I scarcely know you. You're never with me now. You're always away on some pretext or other. I'm always alone. Then I've mighty good news for you, my dear. Your brother's arriving from Paris. Armand? Yes. When? At any moment. And then you won't be alone. William. When am I going to see you again? Whenever you wish to. Well, then, every day. Suzanne. Where's the chief? He went straight up to town yesterday, as soon as he arrived here. Any orders for us? Yes. We're to wait here till tonight for a message from Maman Saint-Just. Right. Did you follow them? Yes. The sailor gave a letter to Sir Andrew Brooks. Did you get it? It wasn't easy, but... We had six men there. Where are they now? Gagged and bound on the ship. And the letter? We will release them tomorrow. Watch every movement they make. Go over to France at once. The moment Saint Just returns, arrest him. Ah, oh, Saint Just. Marguerite Saint Just. The famous actress. She will give a great performance by Republican command for her brother's sake. Percy, I don't want Armand to go back to France. If you help me, we can keep him in England. You settle down here, marry a nice girl, 
and have lovely children. What a dreadful prospect. What has poor Armand done to be sentenced to matrimony? You should know better, my dear. You're unhappy. Why? Armand, I have the satisfaction of knowing that the biggest fool in England has the most complete contempt for his wife. Percy, how did it happen? I don't know. I only know that when I married him, he was a man. He was my lover. I was glad to give up everything for him. And now... You mustn't leave me, Armand. I need you. I'm all alone. I can't stay. You're going back to France? But it's not safe. For me? I'm no aristocrat. For anyone, under the terror. I have to look after the Blakeney estate in France. Oh, Percy's so rich. What does it mean to him? He's not even interested in his English estates. Since the terror, he wouldn't go over to France for all the treasures in the world. Why should you risk your life for his money? I don't risk my life. Don't worry, darling. May I ask you something? What's happened to you and Marguerite? Marriage, I suppose? Why? You loved her once, I know. Do you remember the first family to go to the guillotine? The saint Sears. They told me it was Marguerite who denounced them. It was a lie. I wish I could believe that. Did you ask her? I did. She flashed back a yes as sharp as the knife of the guillotine. I watched that execution. The Marquis, his wife, his son. And it was my wife who put them there. So that's why you ceased to love her. What a tragedy. Ceased? I shall love her till I die. That's the tragedy. And it's to make up for what she did to them, that you risk your own life, week after week, to rescue the others. <laughs> Don't be so heroic, Armand. I got a smack in the eye, and I took refuge in sport. And what a sport. I can't. I think I shall give up fox hunting this winter. Now, what, what do you think of it? Monstrous fine, sir. Vastly becoming. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Now, there's a coat that you can wear with comfort, sir. You know perfectly well I can wear nothing with comfort. Until Sir Percy says so. Where is that jackanapes? Who, sir? You, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. And now tell Treadle what's, what's wrong with this coat. <laughs> hmm. Back is admirable. The front's fair. The collar is, uh, passable. But the sleeve, Treadle. The cuff, my poor benighted friend. That, Sir Percy, is the last word in cuffs. Oh, Gad, I should hope so, for there should never be another like oh. it. <laughs> oh, come now, it's, it's, it's not too bad. You see, Sir Percy, His Royal Highness approves. My poor Treadle, His Royal Highness does nothing of the kind. He says it's not so bad. And nothing in the world is so bad as something which is not so bad. But suppose... Oh, it's a crime, Treadle, worse, a blunder. And quite, quite fatal to my reputation. Why to your reputation? Well, because all the world knows that His Royal Highness is guided by my taste. Yes, yes, yes. Percy is an expert on, on coat. And, and riches, sir. I, I'm a very wonder with the inexpressibles. Isn't that so, Treadle? Well, yes. Uh, up to a point. Zounds, Treadle, why must you be so cursed jealous? Look at that puny sleeve, that, that miserable dish rag of lace. Odds fish. Looks like the lining hanging down. It was only intended for a plain cut. Plain, it's as ugly as a parson's widow. Open up your sleeve, man. Let your ruffles take the air. Let them flow, let them ripple. So that when His Royal Highness takes snuff, it will be a swallow's flight. That's it. Why, Timmy Percy, you brainless, spineless, useless, 
But you do no clothes. Odds fish, that, that's something, isn't it, sir? Treadle, treadle. Uh, yes, Your Highness. Don't forget what Sir Percy says about the sleeve. Uh, uh, a swallow's flight. Yes, Your Highness. Flight of a, of a swallow. Come along, come along, gentlemen. Chauvelin's arrived in London. Have him watched. I'm just off to the fight with the Prince. Report to me there. Very good. sentimental twaddle about the poor persecuted aristocrats. Have you forgotten what they did to the defenseless peasantry for centuries? What this very sincere did to you? No, I have not. But I'm no spy. That is your last word. Absolutely. I wonder. Oh, by the way, how is your brother, Armand? Very well, I hope. I hope so, too. But yesterday, he was arrested. Arrested? At Boulogne. What for? As a traitor to his country. Traitor? You're lying, Chauvelin. Trying to trick me again. I have the proof of his guilt in my pocket. This scrap of paper will certainly send your brother to the guillotine. Unless, of course, you care to redeem it. Bring me the name of the Pimpernel, and this is yours. But even if I wanted to, I don't know it. Find it! How can I if you can't with an army of spies? Because you go everywhere and know everyone in his circle. That much I do know. And this also. That he will be among the guests tomorrow night at the Grenville Ball. So will half the world. It is impossible. To a clever woman whose brother's life is at stake, nothing is impossible. Well? No, Chauvelin. I won't. Very well, madam. Swear to give me that paper. The moment I catch the Scarlet Pimpernel. Sounds, that name again? I've heard nothing else all day. At the club, the fight, and now here. I protest the fellow's a public nuisance. I beg your pardon, my dear. Do I intrude? No, no. This is an old uh, acquaintance, Monsieur Chauvelin, the French ambassador. My husband. Charmed, delighted, enchanted. Devilish clever race, the French. How they speak that unspeakable language of theirs defeats me. You flatter us, Sir Percy. No, no, you've got the cleverest heads in the world. The only trouble is, you all go to pieces round the neck. Round the neck? Yes, now look at that thing. Sink me, what a mess. Now, if you'd really like to know how to tie a cravat, I'll tell you. But it isn't easy, mind you. It takes all my brains. I'm sure it would. <laughs> yes. Well, now look here. Well, you see, first of all, the thing goes twice round the neck. 
and then the front folds back to allow the back to come to the front. And otherwise, the front would be all behind uh, as it was before. Percy, what are you talking about? You don't follow me, my dear? That's exactly what I say. It, it takes brains, doesn't it? One can see that. <laughs> yes, of course. Good day, Lady Blakeney. Oh, no, no, don't go. You and my wife must have so much to say to each other. We have. But then I promised myself a little tete-a-tete -tete with Lady Blakeney at Lord Grenville's ball tomorrow night. Good. Tomorrow night, then. But before you go, you must hear my verse about that cursed Pimpernel fellow. You'll love it. Listen. They seek him here. They seek him there. Those Frenchies seek him everywhere. Is he in heaven? Is he in hell? That demmed elusive Pimpernel. Delightful. What? <laughs> Especially that, uh, that line, those Frenchies seek him everywhere. Yes, I like that too. Because, you see, I hear that they do. And that gives the line a sort of something, uh, that sort of gives it a, uh, a something, uh, 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 if I make myself clear. Clear as crystal. <laughs> Good day, my dear Sir Prince. Bonjour, monsieur, as the French say. What? <laughs> Bonjour! <laughs> Magnificent fight this afternoon, my dear. Gad, that fellow Mendoza's got quick ears. In the tenth round, when Jackson had him down, I shouted, get up, Mendoza. And damn me, he did. And sink me, he won. Do you think Andrew Fuchs might be the Scarlet Pimpernel? Andrew? Never. He couldn't hit a ball at Eton. Why? What's your interest in the Scarlet Pimpernel? No more than any other woman's. We'd all like to know who he is. So would your friend Chauvelin, I'll wager. What makes you say that? Well, isn't that what he's here for? Did he tell you? Why should he? Well, why not? Mind you, the man's clever. But a fellow who can't even tie his own cravat isn't likely to put a noose round the Pimpernel's neck, is he? Really, Percy? Can you never rise above trivialities? Can't rise above anything more than three syllables, my dear. Never could. Nonsense. You were a man once. A man a woman could look up to, could turn to in trouble. And now, I wouldn't know where to begin. Couldn't you begin by telling me what the trouble is? What is the use? We don't even speak the same language. Praise indeed. Oh, <laughs> what is this poem everybody is talking about? Poem? Yes, yes. All about the Scarlet Pimpernel. Oh, 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 oh Gad, there's no escape. No, no. Forgive me, my dear. Take our friend round and tell him who everybody is. If anybody is anybody. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly like you, sir. Thank you. I only want to know who one person is, and you know the alternative. The Pimpernel is under this roof at this moment, among your friends. Your move, milady. And good luck. Marguerite! Suzanne! Suzanne? The thing rhymes, you see, in four places. And if you can get a, a rhyme to rhyme, that um, makes it a poem, if you follow me. <laughs> yes, of course, but what is it? 
The Scarlet Pimpernel by Sir Percy Blakeney, Baron. <laughs> oh, wait a minute, that, that's, that's only the name. Oh, wow. <laughs> they seek him here, they seek him there. Those Frenchies seek him everywhere. Is he in heaven? Is he in... <laughs> <laughs> that dimmed, elusive Pimpernel. <laughs> right. Oh, yes, it's a poem. <laughs> <laughs> they seek him here, they, they seek him there. there. Those Frenchies see him everywhere. Is he in heaven? Is he in... The Frenchies see him everywhere. Oh, it's great. It's marvelous. I like it. But I can tell you another one. Sowage. That's a monstrous good color. Hasty. Who made that turkey? Beagle and Beagle. Odds oh, blood, sink me if they're not better than old Master Treadle. Folks and Dewhurst are free. Escaped? No, released. They're coming on here immediately. Of course. That's why they were released. To lead a trail to the rest of us. I shall be in the library at midnight. His Royal Highness, the Prince of Wales. Ladies, please. Ladies, gentlemen, please. Ah, Grand Logan. Good evening, ladies. Good evening, gentlemen. Gentlemen, ladies, please, please. Any news from France, Grand The worst, sir. The king? Doom. Can't we do anything? We recalled our ambassador months ago. Shovel and have the impudence to accept my invitation. Will your highness permit? Monsieur Chauvelin, the unofficial ambassador of the French government. Monsieur, we will try to forget the government who sent you and look upon you merely as our guest, a private gentleman from France. As such, are you welcome, monsieur? Well, ladies, did you back the horse? You work, sir. <laughs> I kicked you out of the whole thing until the winter didn't want to sit. Lady Blakeney with a sad face. Oh, but sadness is for mere mortals, my lady. Never, never for goddess. Alas, even a goddess must have moments when she's just a plain woman. Sounds, madam. Lady Blakeney could never become a plain woman at any moment. <laughs> That's better. Now come and help me through my, my princely faces. I crave your permission to present to your royal highness the Comtesse de Tournay. Her daughter. This is a pleasure, madam. Ah, charming, charming. You and Lady Blakeney must become great friends, madam. Her friends are my friends. And her enemies, the enemies of England. We poor exiles, madam, show our gratitude to England by our devotion to the wishes of Monsignor. Susanna. Susanna. Margaret, They were schoolfellows in the convent in Paris. Ah, charming, madam. Your Royal Highness, I accepted Lord Grenville's gracious invitation solely to implore Your Highness to do something to save my husband. Madam, the government does everything in its power to save those who are threatened by death in the prisons of the French Republic. But if a country goes mad, it has the right to commit every horror within its own walls. Hastings slipped a note into Sir Andrew Fuchs's cup. Thank you, sir. Ah, oh, Lady Blake. Won't you take pity on a lonely compatriot? Are you asking me to dance with you? Not with me. Mr. Andrew Fuchs. Why? He has a note in his cup. Get it. But listen, Chauvelin. Get it. Gentlemen. 
gentlemen, pray take your places for the minuet. enough to see me upstairs. Of course. I send for a physician. No, no. I'm so sorry. I'll be all right in a minute. Would you rather be left alone? No. Please don't leave me. Just for a second. I'll be all right. How clever of you. Almost as good as a burnt feather for faintness. There. I feel better already. Would you be kind enough to bring me my fan? love letter and you sacrificed it for me. What a shame. But I'll ask her to write you another. Shall I? Suzanne, are you feeling better, darling? I spoiled Sir Andrew's dance. Would you make it up to him by finishing it for me? burnt it. But I got a glimpse of what was left. It began. Well, go on. Start tomorrow myself. And ended will be in the library at midnight.
Thank you, Mary. You can go to bed. See that Sir Andrew Fuchs gets this. My dear. Percy. All right, Brinker. Well, my dear. About Armand. He's in the most terrible danger. They've arrested him at Boulogne. How do you know? Chauvelin told me. When? Yesterday. Well, why didn't you tell me when I asked you? I don't know. I... Threatened me. <laughs> why are you telling me now? Because I thought you might do something for Armand. You have influence at court. Didn't you ask your friend Chauvelin for help? He promised me that... Don't trust him. He promised you the life of your brother. What did you give him in exchange? What has happened to you, Percy? You hate me. Why did you denounce the Marquis de Saint-Cyr? So that's it. Why did you never ask me what the Marquis de Saint-Cyr did to me? You didn't even know him. No. I didn't even know him. Well, then. But I knew his son. I was only 17 when he asked me to marry him. His father heard about it and had me arrested. And sent to Saint Lazare. Do you know what Saint Lazare is? Do you know the sort of women that are sent there? I would have killed myself. Only. Only what? The revolution came. The ever glorious 14th of July. And I was free. Why this tardy explanation? I asked you once if you sent the saint cyrs to the guillotine. You said yes. You believed so easily, didn't you? And yet, I still ask myself, am I really guilty of their death? If not you, who is? He plotted with Austria. I told a friend. The man whom I thought a friend. He denounced him. The terror did the rest. Who was that friend? Was it Chauvelin? He promised you your brother's life. What price did you pay for it? What price did you pay for it? I paid a horrible price. Well? I betrayed the Scarlet Pimpernel. How? Books had a scrap of paper in his cuff. I read it and told Chauvelin that the Pimpernel would be in the library at midnight. And was he in the library at midnight? Chauvelin says he wasn't. But I think he's lying. And through my betrayal, a noble and generous man might lose his life. What am I to do, Percy? How can I warn him? Warn him? Against what? Against the danger that threatens him if he goes back to France. My dear, if he's the kind of lunatic I take him to be, your warning won't stop him. But he might be going to his death. Well, that's all the fellow lives for. Besides, he doesn't know you're in love with him. I'm not in love with him. I admire his heroism, but I don't love him. Oh, but you do, only you don't know it. I didn't know it myself until a moment ago. Percy, please don't joke about it. It's no joke, believe me. 
Dangerous game falling in love with a phantom, my dear. For all you know, he may be a married man who's deeply in love with his wife. Never. Why not? Would any man who was in love with his wife leave her continually to face death? Would you? Me? Zounds, I'm much more romantic than you think. In a case like that, I wouldn't leave you. Not even to go to my tailor. The horses are ready, sir. Thank you, Binker. Are you going away? Oh, yes, didn't I tell you? Important business in town. Goodbye, my dear. Your tailors, I suppose. Not only my tailors, but also my bootmaker. And incidentally, I want to see what my influence is worth at court. That little matter of your brother's. Perhaps I can help. Oh, Percy, if you could, I'd love you all my life. Gad, I... I must remember that, my dear. Goodbye. It's six o'clock, my lady. I suppose you want me to leave this room. I've never been here quite alone, have I? Uh, no, my lady. All right, Benka. Thank you. Percy! Brinker, Brinker. My lady, a letter to be delivered into your ladyship's hands. From Sir Percy? No, madame. From His Excellency, the French Ambassador. Where is Monsieur Chauvelin? He left this morning for France, madame. All right, thank you. Brinker. The carriage. She could, my lady. Andrew Fulkson. Yes, my lady. Of course, Andrew. Lady Blakeney, what's happened? Sir Andrew, I... there's no time to waste in talking. Just listen to me. Your leader and friend, the Scarlet Pimpernel, my husband. How do you know that, my lady? Don't ask me any questions now. He's in deadly peril. Chauvelin knows that Percy Blakeney and the Scarlet Pimpernel are one and the same. How did Chauvelin come to know? Through me. 
Do you mean to say that you betrayed him? Yes, 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 I betrayed him. Never mind how. Just tell me this. Has Percy left for Boulogne? Yes. To save my brother? And to Tony. What is their meeting place at Boulogne? Why? Do you want to... Oh, look at me, man. Do I look like a woman who wants to send her husband to his death? I want to find Percy, to warn him, to save him, or to die with him. I'll go with you. Can you bring your friends? Ten of them. The rest are in France. Percy has forbidden us to go over. It'll be the first time we've ever disobeyed him. I'll save Percy, even if I had to kill Chauvelin. And if he goes to the guillotine, I'll go after him. There you are, citizens! Boulogne has a guillotine of his own now. Same as Paris. That's nothing. Half the towns in France have got him. Let her go, Francois. Good, eh? So much for the bait. Now for the trap. We can't afford to make any mistakes this time. Remember, it's either the Pimpernel or ourselves for the guillotine. Robespierre knows he's here. Yeah. The net must be spread with more than cunning. Blakeney's no fool. Besides, he's a master of makeup and disguise. He may turn up as an old woman, a peddler with a pack, a peasant with a beard, anything. Thank God for this garlic paper now! Fast! Fast! Listen, my friend. The next time you want to put on a false beard, choose a good one. Not a bird's nest that wouldn't deceive a child. <laughs> <laughs> Clumsy idiot! Let go of you! I'll teach him to pull the best beard in Boulogne. <laughs> Monkeys, you, you'll hear more of this. Honest woman I am, one of the few in our street. Stripped naked by soldiers, and then searched to see if I was a man. Listen, Captain. If I were 20 years younger, that's what I should be. Bravo, Uncle. That's the spirit. Where are you boys serving now? Oh, we're on leave. Stealing away the hearts of the girls of Boulogne. Huh? Uh, no, sir. I'm in love. It's the wife of another man. <laughs> no, it's my own. Splendid. <laughs> <laughs> Captain, I tell you a secret. You and I are the only men in France who are in love with our wives. All right, let's drink to it. Yeah. <laughs> well, here's to it. Here's to it. But it'll be hard for you to leave her for this war with England. Oh, you think that's coming, do you? Surely. We shall have to teach perfidious Albion a lesson. Well, it won't take us long to get across the channel, will it, boys? No. Well, gentlemen, good luck, and good night. The Tournay was brought here from Paris yesterday. The same prison as Armour. I thought so. Chauvelin's using them as a bait. Search every incoming ship. Even the smallest fishing boat. And you, the Tournay and Saint Just have escaped. Escaped? How? God knows. The Pimpernel knows. Someone will pay for this. Where are the jailers? Missing. Citizen Chauvelin! How dare you burst in like this? Why? Oh. Jailer from the prison! So you're one of the... It was no fault of mine, citizen. The head jailer and the others would have killed me if I hadn't taken the money to free those accursed aristocrats. What? The Pimpernel's taking them to England. Promised us all jobs there. But I'm a good patriot, citizen Chauvelin. And I'm not losing my head. Because I've got some information that will save yours. What is it worth? What do you know? Where you can find the Scarlet Pimpernel. Out with it. Where? He told us to meet him at 10 o'clock at the Leon door. Take him away.
Ten o'clock at the Leon door. Door. Tell the men to get the boat ready to row me ashore. We must wait for the signal. Brogard waves the lantern. Across the window for safe, up and down for danger. Look, there's a signal. Safe. You've got all the roads watched? Every corner and the beach. And a troop of dragoons to surround the place? Waiting outside. Come on, then. The Leon door. Good evening. What do you want here? This is no place for one of your sort. I'm the sort that pays well, Citizen Brogar. For what? For a seat by the fire. Mm. I'll wait here for a friend of mine. And yours. What should I know of your friends? You signaled to him just now. You must be expecting him. What time? What time? Ten o'clock. Citizen Brogar? Yes? Under arrest. What for? Betraying the Republic, helping the enemies of France, harboring a gang of dangerous criminals, smuggling aristocrats out of the country. That's a lie. You've got one chance. Take it or I'll hang you now from your own sign. The leader of your gang is coming here tonight, isn't he? Isn't he? Yes. What time? He ordered his boat to be off the point at 10 o'clock. Ah, but he'll call here first for his passengers, won't he? He might. Might? You look pretty swinging in the wind. How does he know it's safe? What is the signal? A lantern in the attic window. Waved up and down for danger. Across the window when all is clear. Come on, Sergeant. That is the wrong signal, Lady Blakeney. That will keep Sir Percy away. the right one. This will bring him here. And I can see you are longing to see him, as I am myself. What a great actor Sir Percy is. A thousand ways to cheat the poor, stupid officials of the Republic. Look, costumes, wigs, paint. What will he be next? In what disguise will he arrive when the clock strikes ten? I must arrange a reassuring atmosphere for him. An old woman? No, no, he's overdone that. A priest. What could be more harmless? And so useful when it comes to the last offices. 
Sergeant, you shall have the privilege of watching over the Republic's most charming prisoner for the rest of the evening. My lady. Duroc. Citizen. Everything ready? The Dragoons should be here at any moment. Arrange for a firing squad as soon as they arrive. Are you so certain you'll get him? Quiet. Thanks to a charming friend I found in there. What time is it? Quarter to ten. From to th his way is clear. He must not escape. He's in the trap. It's only an innocent masquerade, like so many of your own, Sir Percy. Ah, but mine was successful. Mine might prove successful, yes. You walked in here quite freely, but you won't walk out a free man. <laughs> a prophet now, Monsieur Chauvelin. The time for laughing is past, Sir Percy. I sought you for a year. Your energy, your ingenuity, your audacity have been quite admirable. But now, the game is up. Because all the trumps are in your hand, eh? Precisely. This house is surrounded by my soldiers. And I have only to raise my voice. Yes, yes, I see your point. I see your point. But suppose, suppose I could reach a door. The night is black. The sea is mine. I make a dash. <laughs> I don't make a dash. I don't need to. Because one of my friends might shoot you. From behind, hidden in that clock. <laughs> oh, come now. No one really hides in a clock. Besides, I still have one more avenue of escape open to me. Don't move! Gunpowder! If I drop this in here, I fly straight to heaven. And you know where you fly to. Don't be alarmed, Monsieur Chauvelin. It's not gunpowder. Thank you, Wilmot. You've just arrived in time. I've had five delightful minutes with Monsieur Chauvelin. I trust it was time enough to get Armand and de Tournay into safety. Yes, Percy, they're safe. Good. Now we need five minutes. And then I shan't trouble you anymore, for the moment. We must have the password, Percy. The password? Do we have to use force? Not at all, Sir Percy. The password is the channel is free. Splendid. Wilmot, you get them onto the ship. I'll take care of our friend here and join you in a minute. That was quite sensible of you, Monsieur Chauvelin. Not at all, Sir Percy. You may go, because I know you'll come back of your own free will. You overestimate the charm of your society. I told you once the time for jesting was over. I have all the trumps in my hand. In that room upstairs, there is a woman under arrest who has forfeited her life by aiding the enemies of the Republic. What woman? Lady Blakeney. Is the game up, Sir Percy? Is this the last adventure? I give up, Chauvelin. What next? There is a firing squad outside. And my wife? The Revolutionary Tribunal. 
That means death. It would have meant my death if I had not caught you. Don't be alarmed, Sir Percy. I don't want your wife's life. She's free the moment you die. I offer you a pact. If you'll promise to say nothing to her, if you'll send her onto my ship immediately, I'll walk up in front of your firing squad. I accept. Sergeant! Bring the lady down. Percy! I wanted to give my life to save you. Forgive me, Percy. My dear, it's nothing. I'm in no danger. With you. Don't move, Chauvelin. Our parting would be too cruel, even for you. Just take her out while she's still unconscious. My boat should be at the point by now. Goodbye, my sweet. It's good to know that, that you love me a little. ship around the point. If anybody attempts to land, shoot. Yes, it is. You two go with them. You like poetry, Monsieur Chauvelin? That damned elusive Pimpernel. No, no, I mean uh, poetry. This other Eden, demi-paradise. This fortress built by nature for herself against infection and the hand of war. This happy breed of men, this little world. This precious stone set in the silver sea. This blessed plot, this earth, this realm. This England. Oh, damn me, I forget the rest. Fine, body. Halt! Left, turn! Round, basket! You look! So, now it appears I shan't have time to remember. I'm so sorry, Monsieur Chauvelin. I had to come back for my hat. It's such a cursed good hat, you know. Now, now, don't look at me like that. Sink me if you don't think I'm my own ghost. Duroc! Captain Duroc? I'm afraid it'll be an hour or so before poor Captain Duroc will be able to resume his duty. I regret that I struck him rather violently. Seize him! Always so impulsive, my dear Monsieur Chauvelin. This uh, is my firing squad. Allow me to present Fuchs, Dewhurst, Hastings, Belleville, and the rest. But of course, you know all about them. 
You look rather excited, Chauvelin. I think you need cooling down. So... Just a peaceful little nap, like we had in the Grenville Library. free, Percy? Not you, darling. Chauvelin said you'd be free the moment I died. It won't be a moment soon. Land ahead! Look, Marguerite. England. Yeah. 